it, it represents all the hard work that goes into it, but I think we see like that that's where it ever has to start with. Like we're cutting previews, we're cutting from the green screen. That audio mix is the final audio mix of the film, so that's not even there. We have no sound. So you can imagine how deep you have to drill for it to even play blue because we're showing this to the director, we're showing this to the producers. And as an editor, you have to build it really deep and give it a little bit of vision. It should sound as close as you can. And that's just literally a minute and a half in the film. And again, if I drill up the, the whole sequence, you'll be able to see that, you know, you have to be organized and all is there. And you know, an average film has, I think, 400 cuts. This film has somewhere like 2,500 or 2,600 cuts. Only because it serves the story, not because it has to be cut fast and you know, cut quickly. So again, this, this minute and a half we're going to probably a week of work in the edge It's a critical scene, it's much more of a film. And I wanted to show you guys what it looks like from our standpoint, what it looks like when you see it after it up there. Right? Like right now, it's looking pretty good. 3 a.m. Yeah, we were in the University of Toronto. Camera rig, reality. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Live streaming. Yeah. Over here. That's him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's right on the edge. Yeah. Like preview Wednesday right. or Thursday. Um, 
and they're, it's a little bit finicky, but it works. But the problem with video stitch is it's really expensive. Um, as some of you know, video stitch you have to buy a yearly license. And so one of the programs that I discovered um, in my research, and this is not a very commonly known program, is called Touch Designer. So Touch Designer is a free program made by a Toronto company called Derivative. And what they do is they make uh, VJ software. VJ is kind of like DJing, but except of using music, it's using uh, uh, visuals. So if you've ever been to like, uh, I don't know, Coachella, or you've been to like an EDM, like a concert, all those crazy visuals that are projected mapped onto the wall, that's all using Touch Designer. Um, they're a huge, huge, huge company, um, very well known, but they're not 360. However, within Touch Designer, you have a 3D stitch component. And how you do this is, you take uh, your, your however many camera rigs you want to use, however many cameras you want to use in your rig, you take screenshots of each camera, you put that into PT GUI, and then you generate one stitch template. You take that stitch template, you plug it into this program, and I'll show you exactly what that kind of looks like if I zoom out a little bit. So these are our four camera feeds going in. You got camera one, oops, camera two, camera three, camera four, and this is live straight from this black magic rig right here. And the, the stitching template was made by uh, a girl named Vicky. She does not work in 360 anymore, but the stuff she made is incredible. And you take the PT GUI template, you put it right here, and then you drag all these as nodes. They're, it's a node-based system, very similar to Nuke. So you drag all these nodes down into here, and you have your perfectly stitched, well, not perfectly stitched, but well-stitched uh, 360 video. And how this program is doing it is it's parsing the, the UV heat maps from a PT GUI and then warping these. So that's the original image. It's taking that heat map and warping it and then stitching all those together. There are blending problems because right now the Touch Designer plugin does not parse as much data from PT GUI as we want it to, but that's something that um, a couple of people are working on and trying to figure out a solution to. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a guy called Andrew Hazelin. He's got a blog and uh, he's working on a way to make this work. So hopefully we'll see something cool from him soon. So that's pretty much what I got for my presentation. Um, this is kind of the new the new mount that I that I ghetto made a couple nights ago, and we're trying to see if this will get our notable distance down. So thank you very much, Tobias. That's incredible, really. Thank you very much. What you're seeing right now from my camera is gonna is nowhere close to the kind of quality that you can get from these cameras. So that's that's pretty awesome stuff. And yeah, so um, right now they're working on live stitching and live streaming these videos. And YouTube just announced that they're supporting live streaming 360 videos now. So pretty soon you can put on your cardboard and gear VR, see a stream from my camera or one of these cameras or that cinema camera and um, get transported right to the scene. And you can look around while we're talking in real time. So that's, that's really exciting. So I finally got to sit down. A lot of great things happened today. I'm very hungry. <laughs> it's been a great day. Um, there's The weather is just so amazing here in comparison to Montreal. I've been using a Joby Gorilla Pot that's only about this tall. It's very flexible. It's very um, very easy to bring around. You, uh, I hold it like a selfie stick. I can sit it on the table as it right now. There's a downside to it. It's um, When I'm recording like a conference or a talk, when people, when there's a lot of people around, you just can't see this camera. And if you set it on the ground, it also kind of distorts the image because people become virtually giants. So, yeah, a lot of progress today. I shot 64 gigs of um, footage already. They're all 4K, so they're not that long. But a lot of footage has been taken today. And honestly, I don't, I didn't bring a hard drive, so I kind of ran out of space. I don't know if I'm gonna sh be able to shoot tomorrow, but who knows? Tomorrow it'll be the same thing, and I'll be heading home at night. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm not sure where to start. Probably whatever the hell this is. Yeah, why not? Thanks for watching. Today, we've got a sick review of Cat's Dog.